Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking into the necessary and contingent distinction within philosophical discourse. Great! So, in philosophy we often hear of necessary truths and contingent truths. This video will give a brief explanation of each with some examples and we'll also expand this slightly to look at the difference between necessary existence and contingent existence. These terms arise a lot in debates around God. Interesting. So if we begin with necessary and contingent truths, how can there be a difference in truths? A truth is a fact about the world, so how can you have a different type of truth? Great question. So, philosophers do in fact make a distinction between necessary and contingent truths. Starting with a necessary truth. A necessary truth is a truth that cannot be false. The denial of a necessary truth would lead one into a contradiction. A necessary truth is true under all circumstances. It cannot not be the case. Can you give me an example? Tautologies are seen as necessary truths. A common example is the statement, all bachelors are unmarried. This is a necessary truth because it is true by definition. To be a bachelor is to be unmarried. And so if you were to say, Tony is a married bachelor, this then becomes a contradiction as you cannot have a married bachelor by definition. So all bachelors are unmarried cannot be false. Okay, so contingent truths can be false. Exactly. So how are they true? They are truths because they are true, but they are contingent because they could have been false. The world we live in could have been different, and this particular state of affairs could have been different. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, let's go back to Tony. Let's say Tony meets a woman, falls in love, and gets married. Let's also say that Tony gets married on a Saturday. Now, the statement, Tony got married on a Saturday, is a true statement, but it is contingent because it could have been false. Tony could have been married on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Although Tony did get married on a Saturday, the denial of the statement poses no logical contradiction, so it becomes contingent. Right, I see. So, let's say the statement 2 plus 2 equals 4. This is a necessary truth, because if you have two of something and another two of something, you would have four of something. To deny this is a logical contradiction. To say two plus two does not equal four is a contradiction. Two plus two always equals four, no matter what the state of affairs are that obtain. Correct. But saying Jane is five foot three is a contingent truth. Even though Jane is five foot three, she could have been five foot two or six feet tall or whatever. Her height could have been different. Exactly. Another way to look at it is to think of possible worlds. Philosophers use possible worlds almost like alternate realities to look at how things could have been. If there is a truth that has to exist in all possible worlds, then this would be a necessary truth. So, you cannot think of a possible world where 2 plus 2 does not equal 4. Every possible world you think of, no matter how different, the logic of numbers will obtain. So this becomes a necessary truth. The same with all bachelors are unmarried. You cannot have a possible world with a married bachelor, as this is a contradiction, and so it cannot be. So this becomes a necessary truth. Right. However, I am wearing a black top is a contingent truth because I can think of a possible world where I am wearing a different colour top. There is no contradiction here. In other possible worlds, it could be that I wear completely different clothes. So even though I am wearing a black top, this is a contingent truth as there could easily be a possible world where I am not. Yes, this makes sense. And just to make it clear, like we have necessary and contingent truths, we also have necessary and contingent falsities. So, to say frozen water is not ice is necessarily false. It is always false in every possible world because it is in and of itself a contradiction. By the very definition, ice is frozen water. However, if I was to say I am seven feet tall, this is contingently false. It is contingently false because I am not seven feet tall. 
However, in another possible world, I could be seven feet tall. There is no logical contradiction in this statement. Yes, I understand. So then, what is the necessary and contingent distinction when it comes to existence? Great question. So, when it comes to existence, if something has necessary existence, or if something is a necessary being, it means that it has to exist. It cannot not exist, and could not have failed to exist, and so it exists in every possible world. So, if something has necessary existence, it exists no matter what. It exists in all circumstances, all the time, and the denial of its existence would therefore be a contradiction. Right. A contingent being, on the other hand, is something that could have failed to exist. Even though it does exist, it is not a contradiction to imagine its non-existence. So, this cup has contingent existence. It does exist, but I can think of a possible world where this cup does not exist. This cup doesn't have to exist. There is no contradiction in its non-existence. I, therefore, am a contingent being. There could in fact be a possible world where I do not exist. I see. Furthermore, contingent beings are dependent upon something else for their existence. So, everything within the universe is therefore contingent. Everything within the universe comes from something else. Everything that exists has a reason for its existence and could quite easily not have existed. And so, this makes everything we see a contingent being or a contingent thing, and it can be argued that the universe as a whole is contingent. So, if everything around us is contingent, then what exactly has necessary existence? Well, this is the debate that is had within the philosophy of religion. Theists, especially classical theists, will claim that God is the only being that has necessary existence. God did not come from anything. His existence is eternal. There is nothing that created God or is the reason for God's existence. He cannot be contingent. Furthermore, any possible world or possible universe would be contingent. It would need a reason for its existence. And so every possible world would need a necessary being to create it, meaning God would need to exist in every possible world, making his existence necessary. And so the argument goes that the denial of God's existence would be a logical contradiction. This is a highly debated argument. We are not going to focus on that now, but please check out our videos on the ontological argument for a full debate into the necessary existence of God. If you enjoy the content and you do want to help support the channel, then please check out the Philosophy via Paperback Anthology book set available on Amazon. This is a collection of a number of our scripts compiled into three volumes, Philosophy of Religion, Metaphysics, and Ethics and Political Philosophy. A great read, a great study guide, and a great intro into philosophy. Also, please check out our merch store on Spring for some philosophy-themed t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed the vibe, and we hope the necessary and contingent distinction is clear for you. Take care, until next time.